Good morning, Smithers. Welcome to another lounge car session. I'm your host, Megan Brady, and today we have Natu Bearwolf in studio with us. Now, before we get to Natu, I would like to just let you know that you're listening to CICK 93.9 FM Smithers Community Radio on unceded Gidim Den territory, home of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. And um, we'd l like to thank some sponsors. Today, uh, specifically, we'd like to thank City West, who's located at 3767 2nd Avenue, 1-800-442-8664. They're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. They're your local alternative for telephone, fiber internet, and cable television needs. And I'd also like to, to thank these um, other three sponsors, which are the BC Touring Council, the BC Arts Council, and the Province of British Columbia uh, for helping us out with this session today. And uh, it's September 9th, I believe, 2018. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody in studio. Uh, we've got a nice studio audience in here as well. And as I said, we've got Natu in. Um, how are you doing, Natu? <coughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> There's the voice from I'm beyond. I'm doing pretty good. Good. Um, I know that you've got some things you'd like to chat about today, and you're going to play a few songs. Uh, why don't we start off with, I know that you're working at the Zelkant Friendship Center now. Um, what's your position there, and, and what do you do? <coughs> so I'm the new Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Support Program Worker. So basically, um, it's a brand new program that we are creating and <clears throat> uh, one of the mandates is um, making the justice system more accessible for friends and family of the missing women. <clears throat> and so I'll be working with the families and getting to know what I can do to support them through that process. Also uh, spreading awareness about missing and murdered indigenous women because um, a lot of Canadians have, um, I guess, different opinions about why Indigenous women go missing. There's a lot of victim blaming. There's a lot of racism. So we really want to break down those barriers and, and let people know um, what's happening in Canada and that this is an epidemic and it's really important for people to be aware. And also um, working with the, the family and friends with their healing process. So I'm actually holding three workshops, one in Smithers, one in Witset, and one in Houston. First one is in Witset on Tuesday at the Centennial Hall from 1 to 7. And so we're inviting all friends and family and people affected by um, uh, a missing and murdered Indigenous women to come out and have a conversation and um, let, let us know what we can do because we want to hear from the people what the needs are and what the gaps and services are so we can we can fill those and we'll be doing a message in a bottle workshop um, to just do something that can be can help process and um, hopefully heal from these traumas we'll also be running a sacred fire my coworker mel basil will be re running a sacred fire for healing and um, we'll be serving dinner as well and it's all free of charge so we uh, definitely encourage everybody to come out and um, the second one is in Houston and that's on Thursday the th September 13th uh, from 2 to 6 at the Friendship Center there and the third one's here in Smithers on Tuesday September 18th 1 to 7 at the Friendship Center Hall. Wonderful. What is a message in a bottle workshop? Like what does that look like? Well we're bringing um, wine bottles, paper, ribbon, and paints. So uh, the idea behind it is to is for people to to write a message or draw a picture how, however they want to do it to their loved one and put it into the bottle and then they have the option of painting uh, the bottle with whatever they like and and then after that it's sort of their choice of what they want to do with it. So we can we'll have some suggestions for ceremonial things. Um, they could bury it maybe, or uh, one of my coworkers was suggesting putting it at the sign, the Highway of Tears sign. And so it's just like um, a processing thing and mm -hmm. an opportunity to send a message out to to your loved one. Wow. And so that one's September 11th, which is Tuesday in Witset, the first one. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, did you want to start us off with a song? Yeah, I actually, sure. Um, I wrote a song... Um, 
when I was in university, I was thinking about um, indigenous women and how they've been going missing and being murdered uh, for since contact, really, and how, um, let's say, when Christopher Columbus first came, he would capture girls as young as eight years old to be sex slaves for his men and how that affected our communities. And then fast forward into uh, residential schools and how little girls uh, were being you know, sexually abused and raped by priests and how that affected our communities and how fast forward into, into the 60s scoop where um, my mother, for example, was adopted into a white home right here in Smithers and she was sexually abused along with her sisters by her father and how that affected you know, our communities and then flow into now and we have <clears throat> over a thousand missing and murdered indigenous women and how the, that whole history has affected how people see indigenous women and how, <clears throat> you know, in Canada, they're not really seen as really being human, which is why, um, which is why we're targeted and which is why, <clears throat> sorry, indigenous women are four times more likely to be um, to have violence and to be murdered than a woman of any other ancestry. And so I wrote this um, song, it's called She Is Sorry, and it's about how Indigenous women in Canada are taught to be sorry for their own existence. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, 
I'm not sure if you wanted to chat uh, about the fact that there's currently a young woman missing in the area. Um, did you want to tell us a little bit about her? Sure. Um, yeah, her name is Jessica Patrick, and uh, she's 18 years old, and there's um, been photos and posters posted on social media. The RCMP has also posted um, their latest update. The last one I heard was that she had last been seen at the motel here in town, uh, and that was late Friday night, early Saturday morning. And um, yeah, we're all just very worried and asking anybody, everybody to um, really look at her photo and if, you know, keep an eye out and if anybody sees her either, you know, in Smithers or in any of the surrounding towns to contact the RCMP immediately. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, posting on Facebook helps too, but also contact the RCMP because uh, we're all really worried. And I think if people wanted to, um, like, maybe leave information or, or call and be anonymous, they can do that also. I think maybe through Crime Watch, or, is that, or Crime... I don't know. Anyway, crime I think stoppers? you can, you, yeah, Crime Stoppers, is that maybe, I don't know, I feel like I saw something that said that you could, if you needed to put in for information that was, uh, and you didn't want to give your name, you could do that. Yeah, and I believe you can call the RCMP office and just say, I want to um, give this information anonymously as well. Oh, perfect. That's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Um, and I, I know that her poster is up and people can, can see that. And I know that it was on um, the Friendship Center's Facebook page as well. So if you're on Facebook, you can check it out there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you want to play another song for us? Or perhaps we could chat about how you got into music? Yeah. Um, sure, yeah. So my process... Um, well, I, I always really loved music, and uh, I wanted to learn how to play guitar. And I know that's many people's story. You want to learn to play guitar, and you kind of plan on it, and maybe you even buy one, and then it just kind of sits on the shelf for a couple of years. So I, um, I was working in Fort McMurray, and so I was making a lot of money at the time, and I'm like, oh, I, can find, I finally have the means to buy a guitar. So I went to the store... And they just happened to have a starter kit. They had uh, this acoustic guitar, and there was, a, I think it even included a DVD with, like, <laughs> ma the major chords. And uh, there was, you know, a guitar strap and all this stuff. And so I bought it, and um, I played it a little bit. Like, I watched the DVD, and I learned a couple chords. But like everybody else, it just kind of sat on the shelf for a couple of years after that. And then... Um, I moved back up to Yellowknife. That's where I was born. And uh, I, I just got into the network of musicians. All of my friends were musicians. So that was really helpful um, to just sit with somebody and, and learn about the guitar. And I always loved to sing. So I was always singing, and I wanted to learn guitar so I could play and sing. So it was very, it was a very slow process, actually. It went over the course of a few years and eventually um I found a song that I really liked and I learned how to play it and so at parties I would always play that one song <laughs> <laughs> um and then eventually well fast forward a few years actually I sprained my ankle so I was at home and I wasn't working so I had all this extra time so I started playing guitar a lot more and uh, just playing around with it, and um, I started composing my first song. Uh, so I I composed it on guitar first, and I knew that I wanted it to um, be about my mother, and because I needed to do some processing and healing around our relationship and her death. She passed away in two thousand nine, and um, so I had all this extra time. I composed the song, and then. The composing the music for me was the most difficult part, and then afterwards, um, writing the lyrics was much easier because poetry just seems to flow a bit better. And uh, and yeah, so I wrote this song. Um, the background behind it is um, she when we were growing up, we grew up in Yellowknife, and my family's from Witset, so we never really knew who we were. Uh, and the reason behind that was because she was raised in a, in a home. Um, her foster parents were Dutch immigrants, and they 
instilled a lot of shame in her and her sisters around their indigenous roots. And they weren't allowed to talk to their, their blood family. And they actually instilled a lot of fear around that, saying that they're bad people and they're dangerous and things like that. And so we grew up in Yellowknife and um, she had a lot of problems with anxiety and uh, substance abuse. And we never understood why, because she told us that she was adopted and that her her childhood was really, really great. And uh, she never processed her trauma. So it manifested in her body it, with uh, rheumatoid arthritis that progressed very quickly. By the time she was 40, she couldn't walk and she had to live in the hospital full time. And so we were up there wondering, like, what, like, why is this happening? Why don't we know our family? Why, why is our mother so sick? And it was only after that she passed away that um, our cousins from the other sisters who were taken organized a reunion, or we called it a union because um, we were meeting for the first time. And we sat around the fire, and all of our stories were almost identical. It was like they were the same people. And one of uh, my cousins, her, after her mom died, um, she was reading in her journal, <clears throat> and that's her mother's journal that had been passed on, and that's how we found out about the abuse that was going on in the home. And uh, that started to, that helped me start to process um, why my mother was the way she was, because there was, I, I held a lot of anger towards her because of all of the, the stuff that we went through as children. And so I wrote this song as a, so to process that. Now I have to find it in my book here. For yeah. those, those that are just tuning in, this is CSK 93.9 FM, Smithers Community Radio, and this is a lounge car session with Natu Bearwolf. But yeah, as I'm going through this interview, I'm realizing how it's so fitting that I, I'm in this this job right now and how it's all relevant and coming home even just working with my own people is just really powerful. <clears throat> this song's called Moot.
<clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, <clears throat> so I know one more song in the in the docket. Um, yeah, I, I just, I really wanted to thank you for coming in again. And um, if you wanted to just remind those maybe who are just tuning in what the upcoming workshops are or uh, maybe when the first one is. Yep. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, uh, message in a bottle workshops for families and friends of missing and murdered indigenous women. And you know, this, your family member may have gone missing or been found years ago, decades ago. And we know that um, you're still processing, so we really encourage you to come out. The first one is in Witset on Tuesday, September 11th, so this Tuesday coming up, 1 to 7 p.m. at Centennial Hall. The second one is in Houston, uh, so anyone local in Houston, please come out, uh, and that's Thursday, September 13th, 2 to 6 at the Friendship Centre in Houston. And then the third one is here in Smithers, so next Tuesday, September 18th, and that's 1 to 7 at the Friendship Centre Hall. That's great. Um, I definitely encourage folks to go and attend those um, and spread the word. Uh, also, um, yeah, I, I just would like to yet again thank our sponsors. So City West, thank you for sponsoring our lounge car sessions. And today's uh, session is also sponsored by the BC Touring Council, the BC Arts Council, and the province of British Columbia. And uh, with that, I will stop talking and throw it back to Natu for our final song. Okay, so this song um, I wrote uh, as a project for school for Indigenous studies. And <clears throat> I, read, um, I read a quote in the Wet'suwet'en textbook. Um, and it just really moved me. And this was a quote by Chief Johnny David. And he said, if you know the territory well, it is like your own skin. Sometimes you can even feel the animals moving on your body as they are on the land, the fish swimming in your bloodstream. If you know your territory well enough, you can feel the animals. And so I came up with this from that. This song's called Grandfather. Father, they turn to 
to the village He guided the hunters to their kill He never forgot the teaching so deep Quiet your mind and just listen Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for coming in, Matt, too. Um, for those that are just tuning in, this has been another Lounge Car Session here at Smithers Community Radio 93.9 FM, uh, broadcasting live on unceded Gidimden territory, home of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. I have been your host, Megan Brady, and there's one more thing that Natu would like to say. I'm going to throw it back to you. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to mention that my cat Tesla is missing uh, in Witset, and so if anybody sees him, please uh, message me on Facebook or give me a call. Black, long-haired. Yeah, bright yeah. green eyes. Aww. He's got a collar with his name on it and my phone number on it. So if you spot him, please let me know. Wonderful. Okay, hopefully folks will keep an eye out for the kitten. Um, and again, thanks for listening. This has been a lounge car session. Tune in next time.